Animal Well by Billy Bissell, published by Big Mode, to cut things short, is a puzzle-based metroidvania with a retro style that is sure to excite fans of experimentation and discovery. It's a celebration of life, but also a stark reminder of how dangerous that can be as well as a pixelated masterpiece with modern trimmings, but it's not going to appeal to everyone. It's deeply intuitive if you like that sort of thing, but it also manages to be utterly mysterious in a way similar to a FromSoft game as there's environmental storytelling galore, and the various areas of the game can be completed in any order, depending on what ultimately suits you. You play as a cute, squishy ball-like creature with proper come-eat-me eyes, maybe a bit like some distant cousin of Kirby who's gone off the rails a bit, and you're ultimately put into a 2D world where after a brief tutorialised linear path, you'll have four directions to go, with each leading to different upgrades and bosses. A bit of Mega Man here, a bit of Dark Souls there, with a bit of Metroid thrown in. So far so good, a recipe for success. Your goal, of course, is to explore these four corners of the world and defeat the bosses in whichever order of your choosing, but I did find on my first play that I accidentally wandered into what is generally considered the hardest area, and it's the one that requires you to generally also have tools from the other areas, and I had quite a horrible time, if I'm being honest, while even struggling to make my way out of it to try a different one. But a restart later, and after a quick replay of the intro, I chose a different path, and from that point onwards, it was generally pretty smooth sailing. I suppose the order in which you do the stages is almost like a custom difficulty, and it's definitely cool to give the player that choice. But I can also see where people might have some bad experiences due to the path that they just so happen to go down. As much as I generally love games that do give the option of doing things in a different order, that is always one of the downsides of it. Sometimes, the various animals you meet will be friendly, and sometimes they'll be hostile and I personally found it a fun experience to learn the difference between the two as you first meet them. Generally, most of your interactions with them result in single-screen platform or item puzzles, but there are also some who will follow you from screen to screen in a quite frankly terrifying manner. All the way throughout your journey, as you'd expect from a good old Metroidvania, you'll get various tools which can help you with your platforming, item gathering, general animal defence, and even to be used for secret things that I don't want to spoil, because if you do play this game, then really, you're better knowing as little as possible. I'm not spoiling anything massive or anything, but even the footage here is technically little spoilers of fun, cool things. Just go play it if you want, but if you already have, or if you just never plan to play it, then hi, thanks for staying. A single playthrough of the game may only take about 4-6 to six hours depending on how skilled you are and what path you take, but there are secrets galore meaning that to get 100% you're talking more in the region of 10-15 to 15 hours, and as such, there is a decent amount of gameplay and puzzle solving on offer as you find yourself revisiting old areas with new tools to unlock hidden secrets. One of the things that slightly frustrated me, but which I also totally understood from a retro and design perspective, is that there are no real checkpoints. You always just respawn back at your last manual save, and they can only be done at certain points. It can get frustrating if you find yourself struggling at a certain section which is a few challenging screens away from your last save, but it is only ever just a few screens, and I suppose it all ultimately makes you better at the game. Because I went into the game deliberately not knowing much about it, other than it was a metroidvania that I was told I would probably like, I actually expected it to have combat, but you really do find yourself rarely as the aggressor, and instead you just have to avoid the various predators who are trying to hurt you while you go about your business. It's interesting. And it's definitely more of a puzzle platformer experience than any sort of action game. Despite that puzzle focus though, and many leaps of faith, there are some challenges that will require marvellous dexterity such as the optional climbing of narrow chasms using your bubble wand, just as one example. There really are things here for fans of accurate Twitch-based gaming. I found myself compelled to keep playing in order to discover the next puzzle or the next tool, or even what interesting uses of the tool that I just picked up I might get to partake in, and I'm really happy that I played the game. It didn't go for 100%, and I'm not sure if I will, but that's just me. I completed it, and I'm happy. It's a game I'd recommend, and it's currently available as part of any PS Plus Extra subscription. Honestly, for what it is, it's brilliant. Enjoy.